And tonight I'm going to continue that by preaching on the thought of living in the flow. Because if we're going to be those vessels for God to use, we've got to have God in us in order to give it to other, per, other people. We have got to learn to live in the flow of what God is doing. And tonight we're going to be in Acts chapter 3. Again, that's Acts chapter 3 beginning in verse 1. Very familiar passage of scripture. Um, Peter and John were headed up to the temple at the hour of prayer, and they come across this man who's in need. And they just so happen to have what this man needs. So let's begin in Acts chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Heavenly Father, tonight as we endeavor to study your word, I pray that you would speak to your people. I pray that you would help us to understand the importance of living in your flow. Living in the flow of what you're doing. Living in the flow of your spirit. Because Father God, there is things and, and duties for us to do. And it's going to require us to have a filling of you. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for what you've poured out upon your people. And Father God, we pray that we would use it for your glory. In your son's precious name, amen. It says, such as I have, give I thee. Such as I have, I give to you. God is looking for us to take what we have and give it to other people. He is looking for us to become that conduit, that broken vessel that he can flow through. Because broken vessels don't hold on to what God has given them. Broken vessels allow it to flow out of them and begin to water the place around them. Have you ever tried to put water into a broken vessel? You didn't realize it was broke, but you poured it in and all of a sudden it starts leaking out the bottom. It starts leaking out the side and there's water everywhere and you're trying to figure out where it's coming from. That's what God wants us to be. Broken vessels. So that as He pours it in, it comes back out and begins to water and begins to share with the people around us. Most of us have a real desire to do that. Most of us have a desire to be used by God. Most Christians have a desire to want God to use them in great ways. We look at people who are hurting and we want to help them. We look at people who are in need and we want to help them. But something about it keeps us from doing it. Because oftentimes... While we want to do something, we find that we ourselves are dry and used up. I want to do something, but I'm having a hard enough trouble just taking care of myself. I want to do something to help, but I'm having a hard enough time trying to get by myself. I need somebody to come and minister to me. I need somebody to come and pray for me. I need somebody to come and help me. We find ourselves wanting to be used by God. But we can't do it because we're empty ourselves. We find ourselves wanting to give, but we find ourselves with nothing to give. We get tired. We get discouraged. We get to the point where we're ready to throw our hands up and we're ready to quit because we ourselves are so dry and thirsty. We dr it's kind of like we, we treat our gas tank. We drive around the city and we wait and we wait and we wait because gas is so expensive. We don't want to, we don't want to fill up until we absolutely have to. So we drive around and we're headed someplace and we're going here and we're going there and we're already running late and we realize, oh, I'm running low. So what do we do? We drive in and we put just enough in to get us to the next place. And then we drive around some more until we realize we're about empty again. And then we go back and we put in just enough to get us home. Just enough to get us to the next place. And that's the way we treat God sometimes. 
We drive around with the minimum amount of God in our life. The minimum we can get by with. And when we get dry and when we realize we're low, we'll come in and we'll pray at an altar or we'll, or we'll listen to a tape or we'll do something to encourage us just enough to get us to the next service. But as a result, we have nothing to give other people because we ourselves are running around on fumes. And God is desiring us to not live that way. God wants us to bless other people. God wants us to be a a fountain of His blessing to other people. But we can't do that if we are running on fumes. Because you cannot give what you don't have. The only reason Peter and John were able to give to that man is because they had it to give. They had what he needed. They said, such as I have, I give to you. Such as I have, I give to you. If they didn't have it, then that man's condition would have never changed. We have got to have what they need. And let's make no mistake about it, what he needed was healing. What he needed was power. What he needed was the Holy Ghost. What he needed was Christ in his life. And the question is, do you have that to give? Do you have Christ in your life? And do you have Him enough that when you see somebody else who needs Him, that you've got enough of Christ to spare, to give to them, to share with them? Do you have enough of God's power in your life to be able to reach out and to touch their situation? Or are you running on fumes yourself and you can't give it because this is the last I've got? We get into what I talked about last week, that desert mentality, where it's so precious to us that we're afraid for even one drop to get wasted. Because it's our lifeline. God is looking for us to share. Do you have enough of the Holy Spirit in your life to be able to pray and to see things happen? Do you have enough of Christ to give to others? There's so many people around us who have a need. The same need that that, that, that man at the gate needed. They need Christ. They need healing. They need power. They need the Holy Spirit in their life. But they're being left unhealed, being left unchanged, because we just don't have it to give. God is looking for people who will learn to live in the flow. If we're going to do what He's called us to do, if we're going to be what He's called us to be, then we've got to learn this concept of living in the flow. Because if we live in the flow, then we're always full. If we live in the flow, then we always have plenty to give. If we're living under the fountain, if we're living under the faucet, then we are always filled to the very top. And it's after we get filled to the top that from the overflow, from that which is coming out of us, we are a never-ending supply of grace and mercy and power and all of those things that the people out here who are dying of thirst are looking for. God wants to use us, but we have to learn to live in the flow. Because God wants to use you. The people out there cannot wait for us to get filled up so that we can give them a drink. When you come across that person, we, they can't wait for us. I've told the story before about being up in Michigan and I was singing with the gospel choir at IU. And while I'm there, never met this lady, never saw this lady, had never been to this church, I had never been to Michigan City in my life. And as we're singing, God speaks to my heart as clear as day about a lady who is sitting in the third row in the first part, and he speaks to me and says, this is what I want you to tell her, don't worry about your husband, but raise your children to know God. That's what she needed to hear. But I didn't do it. I was, one, thinking, I don't know this lady. I go up and talk to her about that. She might look at me like, like I've lost my mind. No idea. I, and, and, and the enemy talked me out of doing it. I, I, I rationalized in my mind, as soon as service is over, I'll go to her privately and I'll tell her that. Service finished. We finished singing. Everybody's clapping. I look down. She's gone. She's gone. I missed the opportunity to tell her what God had told me to tell her. I, I didn't have it with I didn't give it to her when she needed it. 
And she was gone. I looked for her throughout the church. They had a big fellowship thing afterwards. Didn't see her there. Finally talked to the pastor. I said, Pastor, this is what the Lord spoke to me. And, and, and this, is, this is the situation. And I just wanted to share it with you. So if you see her, you can tell her. In this moment, I told him about what God had said. Don't worry about your husband. We'll raise those children to know God. He began to cry. Because he knew her situation. She was a woman whose husband hated the fact that she had gotten saved. Hated the fact that she brought her children to school. He saw it as a competition. You love that church more than you love me. And as a result, every time she would get the children ready, every time she would get in the car, every time she would head to church, her husband would do nothing but verbally abuse her the entire time. God knew what she needed. But I was so dry myself, I didn't have it to give. People cannot wait for us to go and find a drink to give to them. We've got to learn to live in the flow so that it's always readily available to the people around us. Last week in, uh, in our message, we saw in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39, says this, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But he spake this of the Spirit, which they believe on them should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus said, I'll give you to drink. Not just for you. But so that out of your belly, out of you, out of the internal parts of you, the very inner person that you are, that same water will flow out and begin to give drink to others. Rivers of living water will flow forth from you because there are thirsty people out there. He is the source. He is the source. But it's the Spirit that He pours out that gives us the power to heal the world. It is the Spirit that He gives us. God has poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. In Acts chapter 2, the people were in the upper room hiding from the authorities, trying to hold on to what they had, hoping that they could survive. They had been with Jesus. They had spent the last three years with Jesus. Day after day, day in, day out, 24-7, being in the presence of God. And when He dies... Suddenly that is taken from them. And they spend the next three days without Christ. He shows up from time to time after that, ministering to them, fellowshipping with them, teaching them. And then He ascends into heaven and leaves them. And here they are, the the power that they had once had so much access to. The, the grace, the mercy, Christ who had been with them the entire time was suddenly no longer with them. And for ten days they're in an upper room trying to hold on to what they once had. Living off the experience of seeing Christ be lifted up. And it had finally got to the place where they were dry. They were dried up. They were used up. They were thinking, we're just what's going to happen to us next? We don't know. They were probably consumed with worry. Concerned that they were the next ones to be crucified. They were going to be the next ones. They had probably lost their joy. Christ isn't with us anymore. Lost their peace. They were living on what they had. But what they had was drying up. What they had was quickly being used. And then all of a sudden, it happened. Prophecy was fulfilled, that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. As God began to pour His Spirit upon all flesh, and His sons and His daughters began to prophesy, and His maidservants and His men servants began to speak, and they began to speak forth, all of a sudden came a refreshing upon them. As He poured His Spirit upon them, they were no longer dried up, but they were refreshed. And all of a sudden they were emboldened, and they had courage, and they had strength, and they began to speak the things of God. That's what it says. They began to speak in tongues. And what they were speaking was about the wonderful works of God. Because of the refreshing. Because the moment you get into the flow. They were living in the flow at that moment. 
They were there when the first pouring out began. And they began to be refreshed, and as it flowed through them, they couldn't contain it because they were broken vessels, and it began to come out of them. And what was coming out was grace and mercy, the works of God, how wonderful He is and how great He is. The people around you need to hear that. The people around you need to know what God has done in your life. The people around you need to know about His grace and His love and His mercy. These people are dying out there because they're dried up. They're looking for something. And the world can't provide it. But it's in you. But you've got to learn to live in the flow. See, today's culture, we visit the flow. We treat, we treat God like a well. We come to the well and we fill up our jug and we take it home and we live on it. And we wait. And as every day we're dipping into that well, we're dipping into that water and we're getting what we need for that day. And then when it gets low, we, have, we say, well, I guess it's time to take another trip to the well. And we go back to the church. And we do whatever it is we need to do to get filled up. And then we go back out again. God doesn't want us to come to the church to get filled up. God wants us to live in His flow. There is no reason you can't be filled at your house. There's no reason you can't be filled driving down the street. There's no reason. Because understand, this place is not your access to God. The moment He died on the cross, the veil was torn. You no longer need to come to the temple to be in His presence. But His presence now dwells in you if you learn to live in the flow. God is desiring to live in, in us and to help us. They were dry. They were used up until God began to pour His Spirit upon them. And the moment He did, 3,000 people got saved. It came out of them so much that 3,000 people gave their heart to Christ that very day. Because Peter, under this flow of the Spirit, began to speak a two-minute sermon about how God had, God had sent His Son to die for them, even though the Hebrew had been rejected. 3,000 people gave their heart to Christ. That's what happens when you learn to live in the flow. See, the spirit that flows out of your life is supposed to be living water. It's supposed to be living water. That means that the spirit that flows out of you should be giving life to the people around you. If it's living water, then it's fresh, it's refreshing, it's new, it has the ability to heal, it has the ability to cleanse, it has the ability to do so much in the life of other people. It's living water, it's for others to live. Not only that, the Spirit is supposed to be a river. It's not supposed to be a trickle. It's not supposed to be a stream. It says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. God desires to pour out of you a river that is deep, a river that is wide, a river that is powerful. God wants rivers to flow out of you. A river is a continuous flow. It runs nonstop from the source to the end. God wants us to be a non, never-ending flow of His grace and His mercy, of His power and His love and His Spirit. God wants rivers to be flowing from this. And as long as the river flows through the land, it brings life. It brings life. But if you allow that river to dry up, everything around it begins to dry up as well. A few years ago, uh, Joel was into dinosaurs big time. Anybody else ever been into dinosaurs? And they had these movies called The Land Before Time. It was about Littlefoot. He was a brontosaurus or something. And they lived in this place called the Great Valley. And it was a place that was safe. It was a place that was protected from the horrible things outside. And it was very lush and very fertile and had enough food for everybody. Because there was a river that ran through it. 
But in one of these episodes, all of a sudden the river started to dry up. And everything started to become dry. Everything started to die around them. And I was thinking about that as I prepared for tonight because that's the way it is with us. You can tell how well God is flowing through your life by looking at the people around you. Look at your friends. Look at your family. Look at your co-workers. Look at your neighbors. Look at the people around you. If they are dead and dried up, it's because there's nothing flowing from you. Because if we are being what God has called us to be, we should be watering their fields. That there should be so much of God in us, there should be so many rivers of living water flowing from us that it touches their life. Yes, they make their own choices. But, but, we've got a responsibility. God wants to flow through us. We are His ambassadors. We are His conduit of grace to the people around us. We've got to ask ourselves, what does the valley around us look like? And is our, is our flow what it should be? How is your river flowing? How is it flowing in your life? Are the people around you being healed? Are they being healed spiritually? Are they being healed physically? Are they being healed emotionally? Are people being healed around you? If not, then we need to ask ourselves why. It's because we're not letting out what God is putting in us. We're no longer living in the flow of what God's doing. But instead, we're coming here to get filled up and then we're taking it home so we can live off of it. God wants it to flow out of us. Ask yourself why. God hasn't changed. The Bible says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God has not changed, and all of a sudden I'm dried up, What's changed? Not God. What has changed? Why are things different? He's not ceased to pour His Spirit out upon the flesh. He's still pouring His Spirit. And the Spirit that He's pouring out in this church is the same Spirit He's pouring out in that church. The same Spirit He's pouring out in overseas and foreign countries and foreign lands is the same Spirit that He's pouring out upon the United States of America. So what is it about our country? What is it about us that's keeping us from experiencing the flow of God the way other people do? What's keeping us from doing that? It's the same source. It all comes from Him. It doesn't come from this preacher or that preacher. He is the source of the flow. And He's the same everywhere. He's omnipresent in this world. So what's changed? It's not about where we are. It doesn't matter about if I could get to this place or if I can get to that place. It doesn't change the flow that God is pouring out. It doesn't change. The water in a river is the same at the source as it is at the end. It doesn't matter where you stand in the river as long as you're in the flow. You are touched by the same water. So what has changed? In this movie about Littlefoot and his friends. They wanted to find out why the river was dried up. So what did they do? They got together and they began to move upstream. They began moving closer to the source, trying to find the blockage. Maybe you're here tonight and you are dried up. You're not living in the flow. You're not experiencing what God is pouring out. It's time to start moving to the source. And find what's blocking you. Where is the blockage in your life? Because God has not changed. Something somewhere in our lives has fallen in the path of the stream. And has diverted the water. Has blocked it. Has dammed it up river somewhere. So that we are no longer experiencing what God has for us. What has happened? What has changed? We need to find out why. What's changed in our life? What's changed in our relationship with God? What's caused the flow to be hindered? Is it sin? Is it weights? Things that we've gotten ourselves involved in that aren't necessarily wrong or bad, but they're robbing us of God. 
I don't have time to pray like I used to because now I have these extra responsibilities. I don't have time to study my Bible anymore because I got this going on and I got this going on. Nothing wrong with those things. But they're robbing us. Is it busyness? I'm so busy I just don't have time for God anymore. Is it a lack of intimacy with Him? Have we stopped praying? Have we stopped studying His Word? Have we stopped fasting? Have we developed an attitude, a critical spirit, where we look at what God is doing in other people's lives and we despise it because we ourselves don't experience it? We get an attitude, a judgmental spirit. If only this person would preach better, then maybe I could get something from God. If only this person would sing better. If only the instruments were better. If only the musicians were better. Then we could really have an experience with God. That has nothing to do with the flow of God. I know that because in China, they don't have instruments. They don't have praise service. What they have is 25, 30 people crammed into a closet to hear a two-minute sermon from somebody who will simply read what they have from the Word of God. Just enough time for them to run out and avoid being captured and put to death. And yet God is doing more in that place than He's doing here in the United States. With all of our smoke, with all of our lights, with all of our technology... Have we replaced God with those things? Is that why the flow has been blocked? We've become self-sufficient to where we don't really need God to show up anymore. We don't need His Spirit because we can create that same feeling by playing the right song, by turning the music up just loud enough, getting an emotional fix for people. And then when they go home, they're still dead and dried up. Have we become comfortable and content? Have we just simply forgotten who the source is? What's blocking the flow of God in your life today? What's keeping us from experiencing the flow that God is pouring out? Fear, depression, anger, hatred, unfaithfulness, all of those things are not the cause of what's keeping you from experiencing God. They're the result Those are the result of a dried up life. Of people who have gotten outside of the flow of God. And they're no longer experiencing what God is so freely giving. God is looking for us to get into the flow. I can't tell you what's blocking the flow in your life. If God gave me that wisdom, if He gave me that knowledge, I would tell you. But as I stand here at this very moment, I have no idea. I don't know why you're dry. I don't know why you're used up. I don't know why you feel like you have nothing left to give. But I can tell you this, if you want to find out, you better start moving closer to the source. You better start moving towards the source. You better start moving towards Him. You better start becoming more involved in Him. Forget about everything else and you better start getting closer to Him because I can tell you that as you do, you'll find the blockage. You will find what's keeping you from the path, from the flow. You will find it if you start moving towards Him. Because as you move towards Him, He'll begin to do some things in your life. He'll begin to dig some things up. He'll begin to deal with some situations. He'll begin to deal with your attitude. He'll begin to deal with your excuses. He'll begin to deal with all of your issues. And as you begin to deal with them, I promise you, you will find the flow of God in your life again. Because as you begin to move those things out of your way, the flow will be reestablished. And as the flow is reestablished, life will return to the valley. But it's up to us to start moving towards Him. We've got to start entering into His presence. We've got to stop coming to church expecting just to be filled up enough. We've got to start entering into His presence. When we have opportunity, we can't just sit, soak, and sour. We've got to start getting into His presence. We've got to move into His presence. We've got to enter in. We've got to experience Him. Not good music. Not a good word. We need to start experiencing Him 
more than anything else. We've got to be learned to be thankful in all things. See, that's the thing. He says, enter into my gates with thanksgiving. Being thankful to God is what gets you on the path closer to Him. And then we've got to learn to praise Him no matter what. We've got to know Him. We need to get into His Word and we need to allow Him to speak to us and we need to speak to Him and we need to spend time with God. We've got to be open to Him. We've got to rekindle our love for Him. See, that's the thing. When, when things are bad, when situations happen, when you realize that you're no longer experiencing what you once had, you've got to start asking yourself why. What's changed in my life? And we've got to fix those things. We've left our first love. Plain and simple. We have left our first love. We spent time with Him. When we first came to Him, we were blessed and refreshed and it felt like everything was great and new. But we got out of the flow. And we've lived on that experience for who knows how long. And God is still pouring it out. He's looking for us to get back involved. The good news tonight is that the flow is still available. It's still being poured out. The question is, are you willing to get into the flow? Are you willing to be filled? Are you willing to allow God to fill you up? Are you willing to come to Him? Are you willing to get into His presence? Are you willing to to do whatever it takes to find that blockage in your life? That's what God's wanting us to do. Can you stand with me tonight? All you need to do tonight is step into the flow. That's all God's asking. He's asking you to simply step into the flow. He's pouring it out even now. And yet while He's pouring, we're still dry. We're still used up. We're still depressed. We're still dead inside. God hasn't changed. He's still pouring His Spirit out. And tonight, if that's you, if you would say, you know what, I, I want to do something for God, I just don't have it to give. I want to do something for God, but, but I need somebody to pray for me. I, I want to do something for God, but I'm always feeling like I just don't have it to give. There is a flow available to you that flows from His throne. In the Bible, the prophet Ezekiel, He speaks about the temple and his vision of the temple. And it says that he was taken and he was showed the temple and out of the door of the temple, the place where God was, the Holy of Holies, he said out from under the door, water was flowing forth. And that water came out and it flowed through the courtyard. And it flowed out from underneath the wall. And they went outside the wall and they began to look and the river was spreading out across the land. Ran all the way to the sea. And everywhere it went, life was there. The flow is still there. It still is proceeding forth from His throne. you just got to get to the source. Maybe you're here tonight and you've lost your joy. You've lost your purpose. You've lost your love. I want you to come tonight. I want you to come. I want you to get out of your seats and I want you to come. And when you come, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to come to be prayed for. I don't want you to come so that somebody can lay hands on you. I want you to come to give Him thanks. I want you to come and give Him praise. I want you to come and give Him adoration. I want you to come and speak to Him. Hear from Him. Be touched by Him. To fall on your face if need be. And just spend time with God. To wash His feet with your tears. 
to pour out your oil of anointing on Him. I want you to come so that you can bless Him. He is your source. I'm not your source. Pastor Ali is not your source. Your husband, your wife is not your source. He is your source. And if you're not experiencing the flow, then you need to start moving closer to the source. Tonight, I want you to come right now. If that's your need, if you say, you know what? I need God more than anything else because I'm dry. I know that he's got something to do, but I want to learn. I want to live in the flow. I don't want to just fill up on a Sunday night and leave this place and hope I can get by until the next Sunday night, the next Sunday morning, the next Wednesday. Again, don't come so that somebody can pray for you. I want you to come with your minds focused upon him. And I want you just to begin to give Him what He's worthy of. I want you to begin to move towards Him. To begin to just say, God, God, there's something blocking this flow in my life. And I don't know what it is. But I just want to know you. I need to get closer to you because something has changed in our relationship. And I don't know what it is. But I need you. Can you come and just do that tonight? Can you just fix your mind upon Him and say, God, I I need to live in the flow. I want to live in your flow. He is your source. He is your source of joy. He is your source of peace. He is your comfort. He is the one that you need.